Welcome to the video help with physics problems for Physics 1B. In this video we're going to be doing homework set 4, part 2, which is everything under the headings interference and diffraction. For 1221 students this is questions 4 to 9, for 1231 students this is questions 5 to 13. This is problem 4. For 1221 or 5 for 1231. This is a double slit interference problem. So we've got a slit, we call the slit separation D, and we consider the image on the screen a distance capital D away. If theta is the angle between the center of the slit and the point we're considering on the screen, we have maximums in intensity when we have d sine theta is equal to m lambda, where m is the order of the fringe. So we have a bright central maximum which has m equals zero, and then we have a series of fringes. So m equals 1, m equals 2, etc. And we have the same symmetric fringes on the other side, m equals 1, m equals 2, etc. Minimums in the intensity occur when d sine theta is equal to m plus a half lambda. So let's use this information to answer the question. So the question says, in a double slit arrangement, the distance between the slits is 0.5 millimetres. So D is equal to 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3 metres. And the slits are 1 metre from the screen, so this is a 1 metre distance. Two interference patterns can be seen on the screen. One due to light of wavelength 480 nanometres. and the other from light with a wavelength of 600 nanometers. What is the separation, i.e. the distance measured on the screen, between the third order interference fringes of the two different patterns? So what we need to do is we need to work out, first of all, how far up the 480 nanometer third order fringe will be and then we'll need to work out how high up this screen the 600 nanometer fringe will be. So let's consider the 480 nanometer one first. We know that sine theta 1, the angle that the 480 nanometer light will project is equal to 3 times lambda over D. So this is equal to 2.88 times 10 to the minus 3. So now since this is a small angle we could leave this as theta in radians or if you want you can convert it to degrees. When you convert this to degrees you end up with theta is equal to 0 0.165 degrees. Now what we need to do is work out the height up the screen. So considering this triangle here, you can see that tan theta 1 will be equal to opposite over adjacent. So the height over the distance from the screen. And so this tells us that h1 is equal to d tan theta 1 and because it's a small angle tan theta is approximately sine theta which is approximately theta so we can just substitute in this number here and so we end up with this is equal to 2.88 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Now we'll need to do the same for the second wavelength so sine theta 2 is equal to 3 times 600 times 10 to the minus 9 over 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3 and this is equal to 
3.6 times 10 to the minus 3. Now because it's a small angle, this is approximately equal to tan theta 2, which is equal to h2 over d, and d is just 1 meter. So the height of the 600 nanometer light is equal to 3.6 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. So the question asks us to find the distance between these two, i.e. the difference in the heights. So we have delta H is equal to 3.6 minus 2.88 times 10 to the minus 3. Solving that, we end up with 0 0.72 times 10 to the minus 3 meters, or we can put a 0 0.72 millimeters. And that's the answer to this problem. This is problem 5 for 1, 2, 2, 1, or 6 for 1, 2, 3, 1. Again, this is a double slit problem where there's a distance D between our slits, a distance capital D to our screen, and the maximas, we've got an angle theta, and then the maximas are at D sine theta is equal to m lambda. So in this question, in a double slit arrangement, the slits are separated by a distance equal to 100 times the wavelength. So we've got the distance is equal to 100 lambda. And part A says, what is the angular separation between the first and second maxima? So we'll call the central maxima the zeroth maxima. And so the first maxima is when m equals 1. And the second maxima occurs when m equals 2. And we want to know the difference in the angles between these two. So let's do the first maxima. We've got m is equal to 1. And so we have sine theta 1 is equal to lambda over d, which is 100 lambda. So this is equal to 1 over 100. So this would be the angle in radians because it's a small angle sine theta is approximately theta. If you want to work it out in degrees, this is equal to 0 0.5729. Now second maxima will occur when m is equal to 2. So we've got sine theta 2 is equal to 2 lambda over 100 lambda, which is equal to 1 over 50. And so that's going to be double this number. We'll end up with 1.14599 degrees if we do it in degrees. So to get the angular separation, we just subtract these from each other. You can see that this one's double that one. So when we subtract them, we'll just end up with this one back. So we've got that our separation is equal to 1 over 100 radians, or you could write it as 0 0.57 degrees. And then part B says, what is the linear distance between the first and second maxima if the screen is at a distance of 50 centimeters from the slits? So what we need to do is work out what's this h1 for the first maxima, and what's the h2 for the second maxima and then we can work out the difference in this height here. So we know that tan theta 1 is equal to h1 on d and because these are small angles this is approximately sine theta 1 which is approximately theta 1 so this is equal to 1 over 100. So this tells us that h1 is equal to 0 0.500 because that's our d over 100. So this is equal to 5.0 times 10 to the minus 3 meters or 5 millimeters. For the second order one we've got tan theta 2 is equal to h2 over d which is equal to 1 over 50 and so this tells us that h2 is equal to 
0 0.500 over 50 and so this turns out to be 10 millimeters and so the difference in the heights is 10 minus 5 which is equal to 5 millimeters so that's the distance between these two maximas on the screen problem 7 this is a one, two, three, one only problem. In this problem, we have two coherent sources, source two and source one. They're both emitting electromagnetic waves with a wavelength of one meter, and there's four meters between these sources. We consider this axis along here, which is perpendicular to the distance between them, the x-axis, and the question asks us where along this axis will we get maximums in intensity. The first maximum in intensity is going to be right here at S1 because 4 meters is an integer multiple of the number of wavelengths. So the signal coming from source 2 will be perfectly in phase with the signal coming from source 1 and we'll get a maximum there. What we need to do is work out where the next maximums are going to be. Let's consider how far they've travelled in both cases. If this is the point we're considering here, then the signal from source 1 has travelled a distance x and the signal from source 2 has travelled a distance the square root of 4 squared plus x squared. Now if the difference between this and this is equal to an integer number of wavelengths, then they're going to be in phase and we're going to get a maximum. So when the square root of 4 plus x squared, 4 squared plus x squared minus x is equal to n lambda, we will get a maximum. Now this maximum at the origin is going to happen when n is equal to 4. So the next maximum is going to happen when n is equal to 3 because because the path lengths they've travelled are going to get more and more similar as we travel along that x-axis and so n is going to have to decrease. So to solve for the first maximum we substitute in n equals 3 into this equation. So first max when n is equal to 3 and so we have the square root of 4 squared plus x squared minus x is equal to 3 times lambda which is 1 so that's 3 so the square root of 4 squared plus x squared is equal to 3 plus x and so we need to solve this for x so if we square both sides we have 4 squared plus x squared is equal to 3 squared plus 6x plus x squared that's squaring this and expanding the bracket these x squareds will cancel out and we end up with 6x is equal to 4 squared, 16 minus 9. And so x is equal to 16 minus 9, which is 7 over 6 metres. So when x is equal to 7 over 6 metres, that will be when the first maximum after the origin occurs. So next maximum, when n is equal to 2, and so again we solve this equation but with n is equal to 2. So let's substitute that immediately into this line. We've got the square root of 4 squared plus x squared is equal to 2 plus x. Now square everything. 4 squared plus x squared is equal to 4 plus 4x plus x squared. The x squareds cancel out and we end up with 4x is equal to 16 minus 4 and so this tells us that x is equal to 16 minus 4, which is 12 over 4, which is 3 metres. And finally, the third maximum will be when n is 1 less than this, so will be when n equals 1. And so substituting in, we've got the square root of 4 squared plus x squared is equal to 1 plus x. And so 4 squared plus x squared is equal to 1 plus 2x plus x squared. These will cancel and we'll end up with x is equal to 16 minus 1 on 2, which is equal to 15 over 2 metres. Now, when n equals 0, we'll have another maximum, but that will occur when, as x goes to infinity. 
That's what we expect because the 4 meters becomes insignificant at infinity. Part B, is the intensity at the nearest minimum equal to zero? Justify your answer. Okay, so the minimum. The minimum occurs when these signals are out of phase with each other. However, the intensity of the two signals at the minimum point is not going to be equal because it's traveled a lot further from source two than from source one. And the signal strength drops off as one on R squared. So the intensity will not be zero, no, because the intensity of the two sources is not equal and so they cannot cancel each other out. Problem 8 which is a 1, 2, 3, 1 only problem. In this problem we have a Young's double slit experiment set up with a piece of mica placed over one of the slits. So let's let this have a thickness t and it's got a refractive index n is equal to 1.58 and we're told that we then observe the central maximum here to be equivalent to the m equals 7 maximum without the mica. So this tells us that the light coming through this slit has traveled an extra seven wavelengths compared to the light coming from this slit. And one thing that we need to remember is that as it's traveling through the micro of thickness T here, it's traveling through air with thickness T here with a refractive index of 1.00. So this seven wavelength difference must occur within the mica as once it's left the mica in the air, it's traveled exactly the same distance through the symmetry. So what we know is that the optical path length through the mica, which is n times the thickness, has to be equal to the optical path length through this air, and n in this case is just 1, so that is just equal to the thickness of the air, plus an extra 7 lambda. So it undergoes an extra 7 phases in this mica here, which is what this 7 lambda is. So we just need to solve this now. We're told that lambda is 550 nanometers. So we have T outside of N minus 1 is equal to 7 lambda. And so the thickness is equal to 7 lambda over N minus 1. And so we've got 7 times 550 nanometers over n minus 1 which is 1.58 the refractive index of the mica minus 1 solving that on the calculator we get 6.638 times 10 to the minus 6 meters so we can write this as 6.64 micrometers and that's the solution to this problem okay problem 6 for 1 2 2 1 well, this is problem 9 for 1, 2, 3, 1. In this problem, we have a sheet of glass with n equals 1.50. We have a sheet of oil or a film of oil with n equals 1.30. And above that, we have air with n is equal to 1.00. And we have a source that we can vary the wavelength of. And we get destructive interference at 500 nanometers and 700 nanometers. So let's just consider what's happening to the light as it hits this. When the light comes from above, some of it is reflected off this oil layer. Now as the oil has a larger refractive index than the air, this undergoes a pi phase change. Now not all the light is reflected, some is transmitted and is then reflected off this oil glass boundary. And once again, as it's reflecting off glass, which has a larger refractive index than the oil, 
we've got a pi phase change. And let's let this thickness here be t. When 2t, the distance travelled, is a half number of wavelengths, then we're going to end up with destructive interference because the light will be perfectly out of phase. So let's write down an equation for that. So we've got 2t is equal to n plus a half, now lambda, but this is the lambda of the light inside the oil as that's where it's traveling this distance t so we should put this as lambda over n where this n is referring to the 1.3 the refractive index of the oil so we know this equation is satisfied when lambda is 500 nanometers and when lambda is 700 nanometers however those are going to have different ends the question says that there's destructive inter is observed for no other wavelengths in between these. So this says that the ends are consecutive integers. So what we have is we have 2t is equal to n plus a half. Now this is the 500 nanometers over the 1.3. That's just substituting in for this one. And then also it occurs at when n is one less than this. So this is n minus a half. 700 nanometers over 1.3. So we know these are consecutive because there's no destructive interference in between. Okay, so now what we can do is solve for n. So we have n plus a half over n minus a half. Now the 1.3s will cancel, the 100 nanometers will cancel, so we end up with 7 over 5. So solving this, we have 5n plus 5 over 2 is equal to 7n minus 7 over 2. So we can see that 2n is equal to 5 plus 7, which is 12 over 2. So n is equal to 3. So now we've got n, we can work out what the thickness is just by substituting in here. So 2t is equal to 3 plus a half times 500 nanometers over 1.3. Solving this on the calculator, we end up with 673 nanometers. So that's how we do that one. Problem 10. This is a 1, 2, 3, 1 only problem. So in this problem, we're using Newton's ring apparatus to determine the radius of curvature of the lens. So we've got a piece of glass here with another curved piece of glass put on top of it. And what we want to know is what's this radius r of curvature of this lens here. Now the nth ring occurs at a radius of 0 0.157 centimeters. There was a typo in 2012. And the n plus 20th ring occurs at a radius of 0 0.366 centimetres. And we're asked what's the radius of curvature of this ring here. Let's consider what happens to light when it's reflected off this part of our surface with a thickness d here. So some of the light is reflected off this boundary here. As this is reflected off a less dense medium, there's no phase change. Some of it's transmitted and is then reflected off this surface here. Now there is a pi phase change there. As it's going from air to glass, so it's being reflected off a more optically dense medium. So this is referring to bright fringes these numbers here. So this is asking us about where constructive interference occurs. So constructive interference will occur when this path difference 2d is equal to m plus a half lambda. Now we need the half to account for this phase change here so that they're back in phase by the time they interfere with each other. So let's call this equation 1. Now what we can do is look at a bit at the geometry of the situation. This is our distance d here. This is the radius of these fringes. So let's call this little r 
and this is our d here. So you can see this distance here, which is r minus d, is equal to, using Pythagoras, as this is a right angle triangle, capital R squared minus little r squared, and then take the square root. So let's write that down as our second equation. We have r minus d is equal to the square root of r squared minus little r squared. So we can write this as r squared minus 2rd is equal plus d squared is equal to r squared minus little r squared, just squaring both sides and expanding the brackets here. These capital R squareds will cancel out, and we end up with 2rd is equal to d squared plus r squared. Now, we can make the assumption that d is a lot less than r. That will be true as long as our radius of curvature is very big compared to the wavelength of the light. If our radius of curvature wasn't big, then we wouldn't see many fringes. So it, this is a reasonable assumption to make. So this d squared is much less than this r squared, so we can ignore it. So this tells us that 2rd is approximately little r squared, and so 2d is equal to little r squared over capital R. So let's call this equation 2. Now what we can do is equate 1 and 2, which tells us that m plus a half lambda is equal to little r squared over r, or we can write this as the radius of curvature is equal to little r squared over m plus a half lambda. And now we have two situations. We know for the nth fringe that the radius of curvature is 0.157, and for the m plus 20th fringe, then the radius of curvature is 0 0.366. So let's substitute that in. We've got our radius of curvature is equal to 0 0.157 squared, and that's centimetres squared, over n plus a half times the wavelength, which we're told is 546 nanometers and that is equal to 0 0.366 squared oh, that centimeter squared over n plus 20 plus a half times 546 nanometers now what we can do is take this part of the equation and solve it for n so cancel out all our common factors and what we end up with is 0 0.157 squared over 0 0.366 squared is equal to n plus a half over n plus 20 and a half. And then solving this, this is equal to 0 0.184. So expanding and solving for n, make sure that you can do this, you end up with n is equal to 4. So this needs to be an integer. And what we can do now that we've got n is we can substitute n back into this equation to get our radius of curvature. So our radius of curvature is equal to 0 0.157 times 10 to the minus 2 squared, so this is to account for the centimetres, over 4.5 times 546 times 10 to the minus 9. And solving that on the calculator, we end up with 1.00 metres. So that's how we do that problem, which is very similar to one of the problems you'll do in the lab. Okay. Now we're on to problem 7 for 1, 2, 2, 1, or 11 for 1, 2, 3, 1. In this problem, we have a flat sheet of plastic with n is equal to 1.2 and a piece of glass like this with n is equal to 1.5. We shine light with a wavelength of 600 nanometers onto it and we observe the fringe patterns. And we're given a sketch of where these fringes are. So you'll need to look at that sketch so that you can count how many of them there are. Part A says how thick is the space between the glass and the plastic at B. Okay, so this is where you have to count. The 
A is this point here. When the light comes in and is reflected off the very, very, very thin piece of air at the glass air boundary, it doesn't undergo a phase change. When it is reflected from the air off the plastic, as the plastic is more dense than the air, which has n is equal to 1.0, it does undergo a phase change. So A, this is the m equals 0, the zeroth order dark fringe. So that one's number 0. So counting from left to right, we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we know that at B, m is equal to 6. And we can use that to work out the thickness. So let's consider the light reflected off here undergoes no phase change. Reflected off here undergoes a high phase change because it's being reflected off a more dense medium. And the distance the wave has travelled through the air is 2d, where d is the thickness. Now we're considering dark fringes, so we can write 2d is equal to m lambda. No a half, because when they come back here, if they've travelled an integer number of wavelengths, they're already out of phase because one of them's undergone a phase change and the other has not. And so d is equal to m lambda over 2, and so this is equal to 6 times 600 nanometers over 2, so that's equal to 1,800 nanometers. Now in part b of the question, we place this underwater. So instead of being n equals 1 here, we have n is equal to 1.33. So when it reflects off this glass water boundary, there's no phase change because it's reflecting off a less dense optical medium. And there's also no phase change when it is reflected off the plastic because 1.2 is less than 1.33. So A will now be a bright spot. Now the question asks us, how many dark fridges are seen when the air has been displaced by water? So let's write down our equation. We've got 2d is equal to, we're trying to work out where the dark fringes are. So we'll have m plus a half. And now what we're considering is the wavelength of the light in this water medium because that's where this thickness 2d is. So we have lambda over n where n is the refractive index of the water here. So what we're trying to do is work out what m is. So we can now substitute everything in. We've got 2 times 1800 nanometers is equal to m plus a half times 600 nanometers over 1.33. So solving this, we end up with 7.98 is equal to m plus a half. So m is equal to 7.48. Now, what we'll see is we'll see a bright fringe and then the dark fringe. And this first dark fringe we see is m equals 0. So we'll see m equals 0, m equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this means that we see 8 dark fringes. This is problem 8 for 1, 2, 2, 1 or 12 for 1, 2, 3, 1. In this problem we're asked to look at the formulas for two slit interference and single slit diffraction and to write them down and explain what everything means and when to apply them. So let's start with two slit interference. This is when we have two slits which are a distance d apart. So d is the distance from the centre of one slit to the centre of the other. And then we get an interference pattern from the light coming from the two slits interfering. And we have a bright central maximum and then maximums off to either side. So this is the m equals 0 maximum. We've got m equals 1 here and m equals 1 here and m equals 2, m equals 2. 
So the m's refer to the order of the maximum. Now, if we draw a line perpendicular from the middle of the slits to our screen, and then we extend our line from the center of the slits to our screen, the angle here is given by theta. And to find where our maximums occur, we have the equation d sine theta is equal to m lambda. So this describes positions of maximum intensity. And so that's our equation for two slit interference. For the diffraction about a single slit, we have a similar looking equation. In this case, we've got a single slit which has a width A. We've got a screen over here and we draw a line perpendicular to the screen in the middle of the two slits and we consider our pattern over here. We end up with a bright maximum and then minimums like this. This bright maximum is actually twice as wide as the one here. So this first minimum, this is the m equals 1. So we've got m equals 1 minimums and our theta is measured in a similar way. And in this case we've got the equation a sine theta is equal to m lambda. But this equation is describing the position of the destructive interference, the dark fringes. So we have A, the slit width, instead of the distance between the two slits, and that this describes the position of the dark fringes, whereas this describes the position of the bright fringes. Problem 9 for 1, 2, 2, 1, or 13 for 1, 2, 3, 1. In this problem, we have a single slit diffraction pattern. So here's our single slit with width A, and we're considering the pattern over on the screen here. We're told that the screen is 800 millimeters away from our slit and that the distance on the screen between the first minimum on the left and on the right is equal to 5.2 millimeters. So this here is our theta. And we're told that the wavelength is equal to 546 nanometers, and we're asked to find A. So first of all, we can start with some geometry. We know that tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So this length here is half of the 5.2. So it's 5.2 over 2 millimeters over 800 millimeters. So tan theta is equal to 3.25 times 10 to the minus 3. Now as theta is small, we have theta is approximately sine theta, which is approximately tan theta. So you don't have to use this if you don't want to. You can solve this and work out what theta is, but it saves us a bit of time using this. So for our single slit diffraction pattern, we have a sine theta is equal to m lambda for the minimums. And m in this case is equal to 1. So we have a is equal to lambda over sine theta. And now we can just substitute in because lambda is 546 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And sine theta is 3.25 times 10 to the minus 3. So solving this, we end up with 1.68 times 10 to the minus 4, which is equal to 0 0.17 millimetres, is the width of our slit there. And that's the end of this video.